Welcome to Art Talk Tuesday. I want to start by apologizing for missing last week. Believe it or not, I recorded the video two different times and tried to upload it. The first time I went in, it was crop raw. I deleted the image, deleted the video, went back in, put it in, and this time, for some reason, it was in slow motion. I don't know what happened because when I recorded, it wasn't in slow motion. So I had a lot of technical, technical difficulties last week. By the time I ended up getting it worked out, it was late in the evening, and I was like, you know what? If I put it out now, it'll barely even be Art Talk Tuesday. So I said, I'll just wait till next week. So here we are this week, starting once again. We're picking up where we left off. This is the seventh image in the When We Pray series, which is accompanied by my book, When We Pray, Eight Meditations on the Aesthetics of Prayer and the Spiritual Life. Once again, we'll start off all the images are 15 by 25 in this series, framed matted behind glass ready to go as you can see in this particular image we're working with a more egyptian themed uh set of symbols in this image the one thing that i did very different from the others in this series is that i left a lot of black space here around the image uh, more so than i have in the other pieces in this series and i did that because i wanted to draw the eye definitely in towards the center of the figure here and I've done that in some other ways in some of the other images because of the long horizontal format. I kind of wanted to spread things out, but in this particular instance for this piece, I wanted to draw things in towards the center. So if you look at the vectors and the lines within the piece, everything is pulling you towards the center. Even this heavy symbol here, it comes out and brings the eye down into the center. These shapes here on the arm bring you into the center. Here at the bottom, brings the eye up, out, and in to the center. So everything is centering around what's going on in the middle of this piece. So I, I left a lot of black space, a lot more than I would normally, a lot of negative space, just in order to accent this movement toward the center. And the reason I'm doing that is because obviously, as you can see right here, the whole central meaning of this piece is surrounded in the two hands of the divine. As we talked about in this series, all the hands represent the hands of the divine. The two hands of the divine are doing this, and they're centering and shielding the figure, as you can see here. So in this case, we see the hands of spirit acting as a shield, as a cocoon, as a almost an edifice, almost like a, a, an edifice in which this figure, she is inside and so she is being kept and held and shielded and protected uh, and nurtured in this small place uh, inside the hands of spirit you can also see something similar to this when we read the bible in exodus when uh, moses is trying to learn who god is well actually it's actually elijah i'm sorry not exodus but we're talking about elijah and he talks about how um the Spirit of the Lord hid him in a rock. He said, show me your face. And God said, nobody's ever seen my face and lived. So he said, I, if I was to show it to you, it would be too much for you to be able to handle. So he hid Elijah in the cleft of the rock, right? And then the Spirit of the Lord passed by. Actually, that is Exodus. Please forgive me. Um, been, I haven't been reading the Bible in a little while. I need to get back on that. Um, so anyway, don't need to remember the information as long as you know where to find the information. That's the main thing. Who needs to be a repository for, for facts, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's not real learning. True learning and understanding is being able to understand and integrate and use what you have. As long as you know how to access the information, you don't need to waste your time trying to memorize it. So therefore, that's my justification for that. Hope you liked it. Um, so we have these hands here. Just folding this figure around, surrounding, protecting, keeping this figure, almost a very nurturing kind of caring for, and this whole idea of being cared for, being nurtured by spirit, by the hands of the divine, always protecting us, always keeping us, always shielding us, undergirding us. And so we have this theme going on here, almost as this figure is being cocooned by spirit. I don't know if you ever do that, but a lot of times I do, sometimes when I end my meditation practice. Uh, particularly when I'm doing energy work around my aura and my electromagnetic field, I will send a gold a cocoon of gold and light all the way around the edge of my aura just to kind of protect my energy for the day. If you're very empathic, I highly recommend that you do that every day. That's another whole subject. I'm going to get back to this. So we see this figure being cocooned, and also here we have the standing figure here. And you notice what I did here also to mirror this theme of the, the negative space here. I left the basically the whole body of the figure in negative space. 
So we have the, the negative space here and the negative space here. So I've just hinted the outline of what will be addressed. If you look very closely, you can just kind of see her feet as if she's standing on a perch here. And then you see the figure with her hands uplifted outward. This is also a symbol of submission and openness, right? Head lifted up, so we're exposing the chest, the heart, the decoutage. This is all uh, uh, symbols of submission, postures of submission. In yoga, these would be considered opening postures, opening the heart as you put thrust the heart forward, exposing it, making yourself vulnerable, particularly the throat. So got that idea, and her eyes are closed, and she's in prayer and meditation. And so the emphasis here, as you can see, is on the airs that are rendered, which is in her arms and hands and then in her face. And what I've done is I've slightly lit her face from underneath. So if you look at the light, a lot of it's kind of from underneath, which a lot of times they do that in scary movies. If you see horror films, particularly the old ones in black and white, when you light things from underneath, it tends to make the face look a little more scary uh, for whatever reason, a little bit more macabre. But in this case, I think that it's working because there's a lot of light floating in different places, but primarily you get this light coming up uh, from underneath on the figure. Also, so we've emphasized in this motion of prayer here is what's being emphasized here right in the center, right? Everything, even this is guiding towards the center. You'll also notice as you look at this piece, the armor here, the spiritual energy that I have flowing from the figure go up here and they also go through and come out and surround this all-seeing eye, the eye of Horus, is what we have in here in this Egyptian theme. Eye of Horus is about knowledge, omniscience, all-knowing, the all-knowing, all-seeing eye of God, all-knowing, all-seeing eye of the divine. And here we have this all-knowing, all-seeing eye, not only imparting from the mystical aura here coming down, imparting wisdom and knowledge into the figure. She opens herself to receive it, and then the hands also protecting and shielding in the process of her receiving in this vulnerable state. So that's what we have here. Also, if we look around, this is an arc and I played around with the, with the size here. If you see, it comes out and they come in and then they would come back out here and then it gets, I've kind of played with the shape. If you know anything about an arc, an arc is a symbol for renewal, rebirth, new life. So that is what the arc is about, a symbol of life, rebirth, renewal. So I'm playing with this idea of knowledge Rebirth, renewal, shielding, protecting, this whole idea here. Also, you see this crescent moon symbol again, which we had in the fourth piece in the series. So I'm repeating that idea here because also, you know, that Islam, uh, particularly uh, in earlier centuries, played a predominant role in African countries, particularly West Africa, as they came over uh, into that and conquered in those areas all the way up into Spain, Portugal, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, then the whole idea of the crescent moon also is symbolic of rebirth, of new new life, rebirth, reopening. So I'm playing again, double entendre here with this idea of rebirth, renewal, rebirth and renewal. And we can kind of associate this with Islam. And then knowledge, understanding of the figure opens up to receive. So that's what we're doing here in this piece. Hope you enjoyed this discussion. Remember, if you like these, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Put in Damon Powell Artist, it'll come up. You can also find me on Instagram, Twitter at DP Art and Theo. That's DP for Damon Powell Art and you spell and all the way out Theo. You won't even have to put all that. If you put DP Art and I'll come up and you can like, subscribe, follow me there. Until next week, peace.